Hey, good afternoon, guys. Hope and pray you're having a good week. Uh, praise God for His blessings. Thank you, guys, again for understanding about Sunday uh, and our, our, our just need to uh, back off a little bit. Matter of fact, we've had several others who have tested positive for COVID, and so we know that we have made the right decision for our church. And so, uh, just again, everybody's got ideas, but we feel like as fast as this is going, we're somewhere between seven and ten people now who have from the same area uh, type ministry have looked like have come down with it so um we know we've done the right thing so thank you for understanding god bless you uh, i know we're praying for you thank you for the kind comments from sunday i know it's a little different just got off um, meeting with pastor eric we're going to look at doing some things just a little different with the broadcast to make it a little more personal uh, a little more welcoming and so that people can enjoy it so Hey, thank you for your prayers, your thoughts, and, and I know we're all in this together. We all have our own ideas, our own suspicions, but at the same time, uh, we've got to do what we got to do for the best of everybody, and that's what we have done. And I appreciate our leadership, their wisdom, uh, and their discernment so much, okay? Hey, just a few things real quick, like, I'll remind you that on September the 26th, Wilson Park, 9 a.m., there'll be a time to pray for our, I want you to listen carefully, our communities our country, and our churches. And just a time to come together as God's people to pray for revival and renewal in the land. I appreciate Brother Gene Blazer and his leadership in this, and he's done a great job. I mean a phenomenal job in preparing and getting everything ready. So, Gene, thank you. So, church family, join us. <clears throat> hey, as I said Sunday, it's a, hey, Pastor, we're quarantined. We're, we're not getting out. We'll, we'll listen to this. In that three-hour window, Find you a prayer, a prayer place. Uh, man, if it's at your, at your kitchen table, your bedroom, maybe you just want to spend a certain amount of time calling out names. Uh, maybe, you know, Florence, Alabama, Killing, Center Star, Rogersville, whatever. And then certainly you want to pray for our country. You want to pray for our president and all the leaders there. But then pray for our churches. And here's what I want to ask you. Pray that God will give our churches a clear word in this very uh, uncertain time that we'll be able to share hope to people who are fearful and hurting, and that God would give a word. So, hey, let's use this time to draw together. Franklin Graham will be in Washington, D.C. on that day. There'll be a massive prayer rally uh, in Washington. I know at least two, three other events that will be going on the same day at different times, respectively, about the same thing. So <clears throat> let, let's just all join together, one heart, one mind, one soul. And let's just believe God for a, a touch of heaven on this earth and that God would bring to light whatever he needs to, that we can repent and that our culture, our people, our churches, our communities, and our country, uh, and churches, let's make sure we get that right, can come together. So join us, Wilson Park, September 2, 6, 26, 9 to 12. They'll be singing. There'll be a time of posting the flags, there'll be uh, several pastors praying. Man, it sounds just like it's going to be a great inspirational time. I'm going to be there on my knees and asking God to bless this country. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the Lord's Supper two weeks ago. I hope that was meaningful for you. Hey, for those of you who are shut in, would you listen to my heart? I'm willing to come to your house and bring the Lord's Supper to you. So if you'll call the church office, and say, hey, pastor said that he'll come to the house and help us do the Lord's Supper. If you'll call, I'll wear a mask. I'll make sure I, I sanitize, do all the things we need to do. You do the same. We won't have to touch. Come close. I can hand it to you to the door, on a table, chair, whatever you want to do. But I'd be honored to come to your house and help you and your spouse or your family, whomever, observe the Lord's Supper. So, hey, that'd just be a special time for us to see each other. Uh, we'll practice safe distance. We'll practice, again, with mask and also safe distancing or whatever we need to do. So, oh, so hey, I, if that's something that will bless you, I'd be glad to do that. And understand we have other responsibilities, so we'll try to work the time. You just call, and um, if you'd like to, I'll call, and we'll set up a time, and we'll come and get that going. Pray for our schools. Kids of the Kingdom started on Monday of this week. It went very smooth. Miss Lisa said, man, I seemed like it, it just was a great day. So. Uh, always little things here and there, but uh, things went good. So uh, pray for kids of the kingdom. Pray for all of our schools that are back in session, that are trying to figure this thing out and walk through. 
And so I uh, ask God to bless them. But particular kids of the kingdom, our, <clears throat> our ministry, do that. Hey, special prayer thought right here. Due to our lack of meeting together again, the offerings, and, and I hate to, to be this way, but we still need support. We're still trying to carry on full time. So please make sure that you either text, uh, give online, drop it off at the box, or mail it in. Please continue your faithful giving. And I appreciate that so much. I hate to even ask, but we need that. So uh, joining us in doing that, keeping our finances up uh, so that things will go well. Thank you for your past faithfulness. You have been well, uh, even during these summer months when vacations so often hit churches hard. Uh, you have been faithful to give. So God bless. Thank you for doing that, okay? Uh, remind you that our Sunday morning services right now <clears throat> are being Facebook and on YouTube only. No music, just be preaching. So it'll be about a 30, 35 minute service. I'll try to do as many updates and announcements as we need going forward. And uh, and share what. Now listen carefully. We will reevaluate regularly when is the time to come back. Again, we've had two tests positive today. And so we know it's still going on out there. So, But we will evaluate, revisit uh, as much as we can to make sure that we stay on top of this thing. So uh, just pray for it. So Sunday morning, 1030, tune in. Hope you'll join us. Pray for us. We'll continue our study in the book of the Revelation. The beginning and the end are the blessing. And so we'll be sharing the message there today, uh, or Sunday, excuse me, uh, a clarification probably about the rapture. I just want to make sure everybody kind of understands what's going on there and some times and dates and days that are significant in relationship to the rapture. Not the second coming, the rapture. Remember the rapture is where the Lord comes for His people. The second coming is when He comes back with us. He will rapture the church. We'll go to heaven for seven years. Tribulation, great tribulation. Daniel said that in chapter 12, 4 through 13. Remember he gave the number of days. Well, that's a Three and a half, three and a half, seven year total. At the end of the seven year tribulation period, we will come back with the Lord to set up his rule and reign on earth. It's called the millennium. It's a thousand year reign. At the end of that millennial reign, there'll be another war. Satan will be cast into hell, false prophet and the beast. And then uh, all will be judged at the great white throne judgment. That's for lost people. And then new city, Jerusalem, heaven will come to earth because heaven will be uh, excuse me, the earth will be new and then we will be with the Lord forever. John 14, 3, where I am there you may be also. So pray for that, that will go good. Pray for our student ministries, our children, our preschools as we go through this. It's very difficult to keep them connected. As adults, we, we kind of understand. We're, we love God and we're following Him, but you know, young people have to be constantly reminded. So please pray for these very essential ministries of our church. Uh, pray for Chrissy Hamner and for Rihanna Bacon and Les and, and, and just those two families as they minister to, uh, to people who really need to hear and, and stay in contact. Thank you for your love offering for Earl Trent Assembly. I think I've said enough about that. Thank you. Thank you for opening your heart and digging deep to support that great gospel ministry. Okay, so uh, do that. Hey, in the weeks and days ahead, we'll be uh, sharing more. Pray for Pastor Eric and Amanda. Right now, it looks like about the third week of October. Uh, they, they pretty much have been guaranteed they'll be uh, on their way. It looks like now anything could happen between now and then, but, but they really believe that that'll be uh, the jumping off part. So they're, they're ready to go. And so please ask God to bless them and to be with them and watch over them, okay? Hey, as we pray this afternoon, let me share some names that we know. Uh, for a while, we weren't sharing for those that we knew who were positive, uh, but now we, we just feel like it, it's kind of out there. Adam Davis has tested positive. He was in the hospital. He's home. I talked to Adam on Monday while we were opening up Kids of the Kingdom. Still having a little trouble breathing. Uh, respiratory situations and tired, weak. So pray for him. Uh, we share with you Brother Keith Owen has tested positive. His wife Leah had been sick two weeks before. So they've really been hit hard. Their son Gabe. So we love, pray for Keith, Leah, and Gabe Owens. Dave and Lisa Hamlin, they've having a rough couple of days been in contact with them. Beth Clemens has tested positive and Bobby is quarantining with her. So please pray for Beth and Bobby Clemens. Mark Brown, his family is now quarantined. They, or he tested positive. Uh, Jimmy and Katie Limble both tested positive. So, so you can see these numbers are starting to grow quickly. 
And so that's why we felt like it was kind of getting hot uh, in the church, it was spreading a little bit, so we needed to pull back just a little bit, okay? Uh, there, there are others. Those names have not been released to us to share yet. If they feel like they uh, want to do that, we will. But uh, we try to keep that uh, close until the time we feel like uh, we need to share those. Hey, for just a while, I've suspended doing the Deacon of the Week. Two or three of those guys, uh, like I said, have it. Some of them are in difficult positions, situations with family. And so right now we're just going to. So if you have a need, please call the church office. Even though our services are not in person, online, we are here daily. Uh, somebody is usually on this campus every day. And so if you will call, uh, now listen to me carefully. Our girls only come in from about 9 to 1 every day, except Friday. So if you call before 9 or after 1, typically they're gone or they're busy, tied up doing ministry. And so we, uh, we want to give them that opportunity. So uh, if you have a need, 9 to 1, Monday through Thursday, you have my cell phone, 256 740 Nine three, you may call me, and I'll do my best to answer uh, in a timely fashion. If I'm tied up, sometimes I can, sometimes I cannot, but I'll get back with you. So let me real quick, like Adam Davis, uh, Keith and Leah Owens and Gabe, David, Lisa Hamlin, uh, Beth and Bobby Clemens, pray for Mark Brown, Katie and Jimmy Linville. And so those are just some of the ones that we know. Uh, again, there are a few others. Uh, right now, just kind of in the beginning stages, and they've not quite given us the green light <clears throat> to share. No, hey, that's their business, and so we don't want to intrude or, or in any way. So let me remind you, we will regularly regularly reevaluate, uh, reassess where we are in this process and see how things are going, okay? We had already decided uh, that even if we did stay open, you'd have to have your temperature taken. Mask would be mandatory into the building. You came in the building, you would have to wear a mask. Then when you sat down, you could take it off. But uh, mask and temperature taking would be mandatory going forward. So we'd already made those measures, those decisions. And so uh, so here we are, again, doing the very best that we can under this situation. Okay, I know there are other names out there. Pray for those who are still going through tough times. Uh, pray for little Lana McDonald. Pray for uh, Charlotte Oliver. Uh, those continue to need our thoughts and our our prayers and ask God to be with them. I know there are others. I don't have a prayer list with me today. I'm sorry. So I'm just kind of calling some from memory. So I uh, know we're praying for you, church family. We love you. Uh, looking forward to when we can re-engage in person and uh, refocus on that. But till then, be faithful. Don't be fearful. Uh, be trusting. Don't tremble. Uh, know that the Lord thy God is with thee, okay? So, hey, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall, he will, direct your paths. So trust God in these uncertain times that he is faithful, and he will see us too, but he will always see us through uh, these moments of difficulty, okay? Hey, I'm in the back of the auditorium. We typically record on stage, but for Wednesdays, I'm just back here. It's a little easier. And uh, my phone's been giving me some trouble, so I had to got a new one. Don't know quite know how to work it yet, so I uh, had to get a, a, a trade in. So uh, now Sundays we'll be on the stage, be a little better. But to, to today we're just in the back, back here in the media booth, doing this. So that's why it's kind of uh, it looks kind of the way it does. And excuse me if I'm trying to make a little room, trying to get my nest. Okay, so do that. Hey, uh, let's pray. We we started this series last week by Warren Wiersbe on the bumps we climb on. You remember that? And we looked at some biography. We looked at some lies. We, we really looked at Abraham, how God called him and gave him a promise. Do you remember that? And then when he got into the land, there was famine. There was a fight. He had to go and fight people. Uh, there was this issue with his family. Remember that? He and Lot had to divide. And then uh, this, this faith issue where Sarah said, evidently, God is not going to bless us with a child. So uh, here's my handmaiden, Hagar. You and her have a child, and that didn't go well. Still to the day, that is a division. And then, of course, after Isaac, the covenant promise of God, God asked Abraham to sacrifice him. Do you remember that? What an excruciating, painful moment. But yet, Abraham was a man of faith, and he trusted God. 
So the bumps we climb on. For just a moment, we looked at Joseph. I won't get back into that too much. I got a, another one I want to share with you tonight, then we may ease back into that. But hey, before we do that, we're in the book of 2 Timothy. We're in chapter 4 if you want to find your place in the Word. And, and, and really, hey, let's study the Word together, all right? I mean, it's just refreshing to hear the Word, uh, to see it. Remember what Revelation 1 says? Blessed is he who reads, hears, and keeps the Word to this prophecy. And that's talking about the book of Revelation, and there are blessings there for that. But the same, some of those principles apply to uh, the Word. So, hey, let's study the Word of God together. Uh, maybe you're going through a hard time. I'm going to share a very difficult one today. A guy, just before he dies, his last words, his departing words before he went to the Lord, before he was actually murdered or martyred uh, for his faith. And so we'll look at Paul the Apostle while he was in Rome, okay? Father, bless the people of God that I'm speaking to. I love them. I appreciate them. They're so faithful. And Lord, I know these are difficult, uncertain times. I know it's difficult if we're not careful to get our eye on circumstances rather than on Christ, to be worried rather than trust in the Word. So God, help us to focus in. Help us to lean in, as Dr. Ronnie Nielsen used to say. Father, we pray for those names that we mentioned, for Adam Davis. We pray for Keith and Leah and Gabe Owens. We pray for David and Lisa Hamlin, for Beth and Bobby Clemens, for Mark Brown, for Katie and Jimmy Limble, and God, others that we know who are uh, in difficult situations. I ask you, God, in Jesus' name, to minister healing. And I do pray for a vaccine, if, if that's what we need. And, and again, I pray that in the sovereign will of God, Lord, you know where we are, what we need. And so, Father, you send what is best. And God, help us to trust you to live under your divine authority. So, God, now open our hearts as we open your word, as we hear the Apostle Paul, as he kind of shares his dying declaration that, Lord, we too would understand that time will come in our life. And we need to be prepared for that moment to step into the presence of God. We bless you. Uh, hey, I want to pray for... September the 26th, bless that time of meeting our country, our community, and our churches as we come together uh, to pray. So bless that. Thank you for Gene and others in the shows area who are doing the same thing, that God, you would just bring a spiritual awareness and awakening among the people of God. We bless you and give you high, holy praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, if you have, have your Bibles, let's read the Word of God together. 2 Timothy chapter 4. And again, Paul is at Rome. This is his dying declaration. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, uh, he knows they're fixing to Many people feel like he was decapitated. Some feel like he was pulled asunder. We won't get into all that. But uh, he died a very difficult, painful death. Um, and it was in that moment when I think he realized, excuse me, I have allergies. Woo, this rain and stuff. Um, so, so Paul knows that it's time. My time is at hand. It literally is. And he's going to use the word departure. Uh, it's a great picture. I'll talk about that in just a moment. So it uses this great, great picture word to describe what it means to die uh, as a Christian, to depart and go be with the Lord. And so I, I want you to take comfort. Hey, Pastor, what if I come down with it and die? Hey, if you're saved, you have a home in heaven. You have somewhere to go. You have somebody to meet. Now, I don't wish that on you and pray that on you. I don't have a martyr spirit or, or, or you know, want to die. But at the same time, uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the living God. So Paul is going to share his last, really some of the last words that he spoke. And those words are, are pretty important to us. And so what we need to do is to listen to his heart. And then maybe you and I can capture uh, some of this so that when our time comes or our turn, that we'll be ready to walk uh, the way he walked and live the way he lived. Okay. So Paul was awaiting execution. And so he really wrote a farewell letter to his dear comrade in service, this young preacher named, we call him Timothy. He wrote with assurance, not with fear and apprehension. He he had a quiet confidence. I like that, man. Don't don't you like people who are just quietly confident? They know in whom they have believed. And they are persuaded that he's able to keep that which he committed against that day. Uh, you hear it in his words. He knows that he faces death, but it does not frighten him. He knows that his work is almost over, but this does not discourage him. Wow. Thank God. And then his words come with courage and a spirit of calmness. God has not given us a spirit of fear, Second Timothy, but of love, joy, peace. So, Father, again, we bless you. Thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Hey, um, and so as we and look at Second Timothy, I think I'd already prayed. Now I broke out praying again. Forgive me. Maybe praying in the spirit. All right. So Paul here is preparing for death, and in so doing, he kind of leaves a. I just call it a dying declaration. Y'all, I'm gonna get a drink. I'm sorry. I am really, really, really having some struggles here. So listen carefully. Uh, two verses that really. Uh, ought to encourage every child of God about your faith. And what I mean. So let's study the word, let's read the word, study the word, hear the word, and then let's obey the word. For I am ready, being poured out as a drink offering. Now listen to what he says, and the time of my departure is at hand. That word departure is a symbol, a symbolic word, a euphemism for death. My death is at hand. I'm fixing to die. He knows that. He's heard the guards. He's had the sentence evidently passed down. I have fought, and so now he's going to tell you what he is. He's going to, kind of, going to kind of, first of all, he's going to look around, and he's going to look back. What you think about that? Then he's going to look up. Hey, what are you looking at today? L listen to this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there's laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, what day, the day when I meet him, uh, and the, possibly there he's also referred to the day of the Lord, the day of judgment, when we'll stand before Christ, and not to me only, but to all those who love his appearing. So here, here we find Paul in his moments of, uh, uh, really, uh, of fixing to die, sharing his life. Paul uh, just kind of looks around and he bears witness. Now tell us what he says here. Paul looks around and he says, I'm ready. Are you ready? Now, he, he didn't say I'm ready for the Lord to return. He said, I'm ready to die. My departure's at hand. L listen to what he says. For I'm ready being poured out. Uh, and he describes there an offering that is poured on the sacrifice, on the altar for the glory of God. So Paul just looks around. He bears witness. What an amazing view of death. Boy, if we looked at death like that, I know some people kind of got on me when I said, hey, how are you doing? I said, well, I was good and I woke up. They said, what if you hadn't woke up? And I know I've shared that with you, a little cute thing. And I said, well, if I hadn't woke up, I'd be in heaven. And some people say, man, you, you just want to go to heaven too bad. Well, that, that's, I do. But I'm not, I'm not looking to, to die, you know, any time, any second now. But if it comes, Paul said, I'm ready. So I, I really need to ask you the question. Are you ready? Uh, are, are you preparing? And are you prepared for that moment? You say, well, I have life insurance. I have a graveside purchased. I have a coffin. All that is good. All the physical things that need to be done, that's great. But there's a spiritual side. And Paul said, I have taken care of everything that I need to do spiritually to get ready to go meet the Lord. So Paul looks around and he's going to bear witness. He does not look upon himself as a prisoner being executed. I like this, but he looks at himself as a sacrifice being offered for the glory and the honor of God. His life is not being taken from him. I love this. He is offering his life to the Lord. After all, Jesus laid down his life for us. Should not we also be ready to do that? So Paul uses, the uh, he and uh, I like what I think Dr. John Phillips says. He avoids using the words death. It's not that he's afraid of the word or even afraid of the experience. It's simply for the Christian, there's really no such thing as death. It is the idea of departing, that, that we're going. It means that this tent, this body, uh, is being laid down and we go somewhere else. He knew that simply meant he was changing where he was. He was changing from earth to heaven. And so when we do that, the word departure also means to loose a boat. Now this is interesting. And set sail. This is what happens when a Christian dies. He looses his moorings, the ropes that tied him down in this life and world, and he set sail towards an eternal heaven and home. Uh, I think I've I've quoted the little poem by Alfred Tennyson using the idea, crossing the bar. He knew that. Paul said, I'm in a prison and I'm fixing to be released. I'm fixing to depart. So he didn't emphasize death as much as he emphasized meeting the Lord. My departure's at hand. So Paul just looked around, took, took a view of the world, kind of took in time of examination and said, you know what, guys? I'm ready, are you? I, I'm ready to be poured out. If God chooses today to take my life, I'm ready. Have you ever had a near-death experience? It's, it's interesting. Some people say your life flashes before your eyes. Uh, I've had a couple, but 
uh, when I worked in the oil field, you didn't have time to think, you just had time to react. Um, but you know, looking back, I wasn't, I wasn't terrified. I wasn't scared, scared. Uh, I, I didn't want to get hurt and have pain, but at the same time, I understood that God had a plan, and in my departure, I would go be with the Lord. So Paul just simply kind of looked around, and he said, guys, when I when I kind of just take everything into view, God's been good. Wow. Man, what a way to go, huh? God has been so good. So when we cross the bar, when we leave this world, we're departing. Paul looked around with confidence and said, I'm ready. Not only did Paul look around, Paul looked back. Hey, hey, look, look at this. And by the way, I, I think, uh, and this is not the same uh, ideas when Jesus said, no man having put his hands to the plow, looking back. Uh, that's a whole different situation. That's that's regretting that maybe you're saved, that you look back at the old lifestyle, envious more than the Christian lifestyle, or, or you desire it more. But th this is more than that. Paul just kind of saying, hey, man, I, I, I remember all the good things, uh, the blessings of God, the joy of the Lord. Matter of fact, uh, listen to what he says. I have fought a good fight. Whew. Now, Paul said, I finished the race, kept the faith. Wow. Paul didn't say, or Paul said it hadn't been easy. He, he described a fight, soldier. He described a race as an athlete. And then he said, but through it all, I kept the faith. Three words here, our faith. Um, if we're not careful, many times we'll lose sight of what it means to have faith in God in spite of circumstances. And so Paul said, I kept the faith. Now, I, I think he's given um, kind of a thought here. He said there have been times when I could have lost the faith or I could have left the faith because of what I was going through, but I didn't. I kept the faith. Are you ready? Are you keeping the faith? Are you vitally walking with the Lord Jesus Christ? And so Paul describes his life here as a life of faith. He describes it as a faith life, but he also described it as a life of fighting. Can I read it? I have fought the good fight. There's a good fight. Somebody said in a fight, no one wins. Well, here's a fight where you win, where you struggle and you climb. And yes, you you go through moments of absolute, excruciatingly difficult times. But Paul said, I have kept the faith. The Lord has been with me and because of his gracious kindness, God has helped me to endure the things of this life. His faith enabled him to fight the good fight. Think about David and Goliath. Is that a good fight? We, again, we necessarily like stories of death, but um, God showed it that way. Joshua, Jericho, and man, you could go through example after example of things in the Bible. People had to go through difficult moments, but their faith enabled them to endure the fight. And then Paul said, Listen carefully. I finished the race. Literally, Paul said here, I've come to the end of the race. I'm fixing to cross the finish line. I'm fixing to step over into the presence of God. What a beautiful analogy of the Christian life, of how you and I, because of our faith, we go through fight, we go through struggles, but we finish. Are you a finisher? Man, I pray that you are. So Paul it just kind of, Look back and said, man, everything I've gone through, as the old gospel writer said, it will be worth it all. Hey, let, let, let me just rehearse a little bit of this for you. Paul said, um, I finished my course. This has always been Paul's desire that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry that God has given me. Hey, I just heard today, maybe you have too, that Charles Stanley, the great pastor of the great First Baptist Church, Atlanta, just stepped aside. He became pastor emeritus of First Atlanta, which just means because you've been there so long, he's no longer in an active role, but he has retired, and they considered him a lifelong, forever now pastor because of the years. I think he was there over 50 years, maybe longer than that. Um, but but uh, Dr. Stanley has such an impeccable character and love for God, and, and so man, I, he finished well. Think about that. Johnny Hunt finished well. Adrian Rogers finished well. W. Criswell finished well. Billy Graham finished well. What do you mean, Pastor? They kept the faith. They fought a fight, but they kept the faith. Now listen to me. 
they crossed the finish line well. Finished good, friend. Finished good. I'm fixing to be 63 years old. Uh, I will be at Sinistar in April 30 years and 50 years in the ministry. Wow, seems it just doesn't seem possible. Judy and I were talking about that the other day, but yet I have a desire to do better at the end than I did at the beginning. Y'all, again, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Uh, but my, my nose is running. So, so here we are in this situation where Paul said, my departure is at hand. He said, at hand, and I kept the faith. Um, so, so he just looked back. Um, so, so as you look at your life, look around, look back, and then you need to look, at, look ahead. Paul said, finally, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. So he looked around and he realized all he'd been through. He said, man, man I'm ready to be offered. Uh, nothing else. God calls me today. I'm ready. He looked back and said, man, the fight that I went through, the faith and the finish line. But then he said, finally, brethren, I'm looking forward to stepping into the presence of Jesus. Wow. Hey, I got to go to Clements Baptist Church this past Sunday and I uh, heard Pastor Tim Anderson, phenomenal expositor, preach of the gospel. And he, he was talking about the rapture as well. He's in some of the same studies we are. And he, he showed a sign there in Limestone County that if something were to happen at the nuclear plant, they have evacuation routes. This is where you go. This is the way to, to get out safely or quickly as you can. You know, the rapture's coming quickly, suddenly. Well, man, I'm going to tell you, I hope you have a plan. God has one. Paul said, I'm ready to be poured out. And the time of my departure has come. Paul's ready to go. Are you ready? Hope you are, dear friend. Nobody can do that but you. So, hey, as we go through life, there's going to be these moments when that time comes when you got to be ready to say, Lord, here I am. I'm yours. Thank you for all you've done. Hey, let's live faithfully, okay? So, there's some bumps in there. And the last bump's death. It's going to be the big one, but God, even in death, gives us victory. Hey, I love you guys again so much. Bless you. Pray for you again if you have a need. Senior adults, remind you if you want me to come to the Lord's Supper at your place, be honored. I would be honored for the joy of being able to do that. Just call the office. Let's schedule it. Get a time so it'll be good for you and good for me. Please remember September 26, Wilson Park, praying for our country, praying for our communities, and then praying for our churches that God would bring us together in revival once again, okay? A lot of other, remember all these families that we mentioned and pray for, lift them up to the throne of grace as well. But I love you. Praise you and bless you in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for all you're going to do. Bring us together Sunday, uh, virtually, over the Internet. God, help the word go forth. May your spirit anoint it. And Father, again, bless all those we know who have come in contact and have contracted COVID-19. Bless them. Pray, God, you give them grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Sunday morning, 1030. Look forward to seeing you then. Hey, bless you guys. Bye-bye.